we welcome you to the Dayspring Bible College and Seminary commencement ceremony. We're glad to have you with us tonight. Would you please stand and join us as we open with higher ground. May this be our desire to continue to aim higher. Sing this with us. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher place than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Please remain standing as the administration and faculty enter. Let's come to God in prayer. God, Heavenly Father, thank you so much, dear Lord, for all the grace, the blessing, and the provisions that you have given us for us to witness tonight as we gather together uh, for tonight's closing and graduation ceremony of the Dayspring Bible College. Thank you for the pastor, Dr. Jim Scudder, for his dedicated life in equipping tomorrow's leader. Thank you so much also for all the pastor and staff who share their lives in equipping and preparing the lives of these people for the ministry. Thank you for all your blessings. We pray that you bless all the part of tonight's service. God bless us more. Thank you for, your, for saving our soul. And we pray that your name will be lifted up and your name and your word be proclaimed tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Welcome. We're glad you all are here to our commencement and graduation, Dayspring Bible College. And uh, we are excited about Dayspring. We're excited about what God is, has done and what God is doing. We have a lot of uh, really excited graduates and their families and friends. And we are thankful that you all are here or you're watching. And we want to, again, say that Dayspring Bible College and Seminary is an institution that's dedicated to one thing, and that is to bring the gospel around the world. And we're going to hear a song from our Dayspring Choir. And this is one of the rare moments that every Dayspring student participates in. Uh, whether they can sing or not, they're going to be in the Dayspring Choir. And they can all sing. But we are a ministry school. We are seeing more and more Bible colleges, believe it or not, turning toward a secular vocational training, and we see the need is growing greater and greater in churches and in mission fields and in Christian schools for workers. And we're proud as a college, as a church, 
to uh, encourage as many people to get into ministry full-time or, or part-time as possible because there's a dearth in this area and we really, really need it. So uh, we hope that you enjoy the Day Spring Bible College Choir as they sing Carry the Torch. As part of our commencement ceremony every year, we have a spotlight of someone that has graduated Dayspring Bible College and is carrying that torch. All around the world, hundreds of graduates, whether it's in the States or all across the world, we have the opportunity to hear back from them. But it's always good when you have someone that is here, and we have someone here today, and so you're going to be part of our service later. But come, uh, Nathan, and share what God is doing in Honduras as a graduate of Dayspring Bible College. Thank you. So uh, we're very excited. Um, a lot has happened since the last time that Pastor Mark had asked us to be the spotlight. Um, this last year, we have started a church in Honduras, and we're really excited about that. Um, earlier today, I got some messages from my brother-in-laws, who um, also graduated from Dayspring, that are... Um, doing the services while we're here in the States. And uh, it was a really good service. And we also have uh, a feeding program that we have in a kind of a poorer neighborhood where we're able to provide some much needed um, food and uh, nourishment to some kids and some families and, along with God's word. And uh, we started um, that just a few weeks ago. And yesterday there was uh, 29 kids that came and according to um, my brother-in-law's wife, that there was 
a decent amount of the parents that are there, and so they're going to plan on um, doing a special Mother's Day thing there and invite a bunch of the neighbors out to it. So we're really excited about that. The Lord's opening a lot of doors, and um, we just, with, uh, with full excitement, walking through each and every one of those doors. One of the doors that we're really excited about is the Lord has provided for us to get a large shipment of Bibles for us to use in Honduras some Bibles that are um, not based off the critical text. And uh, I'm really grateful for the education at Dayspring here to know the difference and not just like um, many missionaries in Honduras just say, oh, this is the Bible they use, this is the one we're gonna have. And so the Lord's provided a way that we can get a large shipment, not just for Honduras, and, but for all of Central America. And we would really appreciate your guys' prayers about that, that the Lord would um, open different ports for us to get that to neighboring countries and that people will be able to understand the clear gospel and have a pure word of God. And so we're really, really excited about that. But if you guys could pray for our church, it's called Ministerios Costa de Esperanza. That would be greatly appreciated. And uh, on behalf of my brother-in-laws, Jose and Jorge, uh, who also graduated from Day Spring, and my wife, Flo, we uh, are just really grateful for this college, for this church, and we really covet your prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Nate. We're so proud of you guys and excited about what God is doing there in Honduras. This is one of my favorite services of the entire year, and I mean that. Because uh, here at Quentin Road, if you're on staff, you get to interact with our students. You kind of get to see what's going on. You get to see a little bit of what happens uh, with Dayspring. I have a unique perspective in that I get to uh, have a, a conversation uh, with a lot of our missionaries and graduates and young people that are all around the world doing various things for the Lord. And so you, uh, you just can't share all those things. And I hope tonight that you're going to get a feel for what God is doing through our college, whether it's a young man over in uh, Myanmar running an orphanage. We have another young man in Togo who has started a church and is desperately needing to, to build a building. We have a young lady in Africa running, uh, or a part of a pregnancy center, bringing the gospel to young ladies there. We have two graduates in the Philippines right now who are literally in the middle of building their first uh, new buildings for their churches that we've raised support for and funding for here at this church. We have a graduate down in Chicago running a ministry to Asian students who come uh, on a PhD level or master's level to UIC and other colleges down there needing help, needing someone to, to come alongside of them and they reach out to them and bring them the gospel. We have a graduate in Ohio who was here this morning, Pastor Neil Darian, and they just last week closed on a piece of property in a great location uh, in, a, in their town near them, getting ready to build a building there. You say, well, Pastor Paul, it kind of sounds like you're bragging. I am. I absolutely am. Because I am so proud of what is happening, and what I'm proud of is, is you, the people, have determined to financially support this college. And I'm telling you, it is saving souls, it is changing the world. And I know it's not a big, huge, huge campus, and it's not a big, huge, huge college, but I'm telling you, it's doing huge, huge things. And I'm only giving you a little bit of it. But the one I wanna highlight real quick before we pray is Sean and Julia Duncan over in the Philippines. They just started, or are about to start, a brand new church, there's a picture of them, I, I, left, I left Oliver out, sorry, we, we should have got him in the picture. But uh, Cross Point Baptist Church, and this is in Porak. This is not too far uh, from where Pastor Edwin is. They've already gone there and started kids programs. They've already gone there uh, and done uh, giving the gospel. Kids have come to Christ. Other people have come to Christ. They're getting ready to start a brand new church. We get calls here sometimes uh, multiple times a month, but at least once a month we get calls here uh, asking for graduates. The need is great. And what these students are doing, these graduates are doing, is going out from a church that was started from a graduate from Dayspring. He also and Julia are graduates as well. My point is, is this. The need is so urgent. It is so great. We need to give. And we need to be a part of what is working. 
I wanna give to the Lord's work. I wanna be a part of the Lord's work. I think you do too, but here's the thing. Let's put our effort and our money where it's making a difference. Let's put it into something where it's actually working, where we know there's accountability and where there's souls saved. So can I challenge you tonight? Can I just unashamedly ask you to support this college? We need your support. Many of you support it, but if you want to get behind something that's doing the work of God with a clear gospel, this is where it's at. And I tell you, we're giving you a little snapshot tonight. I hope you take it, and I hope it challenges you. I always walk away from these day spring graduations, and when I look at what our missionaries and what our graduates are doing, and I say, what am I doing, Paul Julian, in my own life to serve the Lord more? I hope we walk away challenged by that tonight, to give and to serve as we commission these graduates to go out tonight. Father, we thank you. What a joy it is to see what you're doing, to see the work of the gospel going on around the world. Lord, help us to be faithful till you come again, to see many, many souls come to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
I echo with Brother Paul Julian what a special night this is, what an encouragement it is to me every year, and, and to be reminded of the purpose for which we make such an investment, but to be reminded of the return on that investment. What a wonderful thing. As you might have noticed recently, the educational establishment in the United States is not exactly the friend of Christianity and Christian principles. That is not new. Literally for decades, the educational establishment has worked, maneuvered, and manipulated in the United States to get control of Christian colleges and assert their right to say what can and cannot happen at a Christian college. I've been part of that battle to keep and respect separation of church and state and religious liberty. If government should be limited at all, it sure should be limited from training and influencing the training of preachers and missionaries and Christian servants. And I will tell you, here in Illinois, I've been involved in that battle in Indiana, I've been involved in it in Florida, here in Illinois, and, and we've sure talked to a lot of folks over the years in all three states, but especially in Illinois, who are adamant that the government must be over everything. We've been blessed to live in a country that recognizes separation of church and state and religious freedom. That did not happen accidentally. Back in the colonial era, there were folks, many of them Baptist, who stood boldly and bravely for the fact that the Bible teaches us that God is the ultimate authority and that the church answers to God. And in the course of the colonial era of this country, there was a Baptist preacher named Isaac Bacchus who pastored the same church for over 60 years. And during that entire 60 year period, his church shared him with the fight for religious liberty in the United States. He wrote, he taught, he traveled, he got involved in battles in various colonies, he raised money for churches that were under pressure. And eventually, it was after his death, but eventually God would give him the victory in the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, which recognizes our religious freedom that was granted to us by the Lord. Having been involved and involved in this state, in the discussion of religious liberty, and especially religious liberty as it pertains to Bible colleges. It is a blessing when you find people that share those convictions. We've certainly talked to political people who were adamant the government must be over and must control Bible colleges. We've talked to others who at one point or another have said they were our friends and stood with us until they found out how much pressure could be put on them and now they don't return our calls. Literally, I mean that literally. And along the way, and I was involved in doing this in Florida and I wanted to do this here and be part of it and I thought this college was the best place to do it, to say a thank you to some of those folks who stand clearly for religious liberty the same way Isaac Bacchus did. And so we have the Isaac Bacchus Award, which is designed to recognize those that out of principle and conviction are willing to stand up, let their voice be heard, and their influence felt to try and stand for religious liberty. And from where we stand, we especially notice when they stand for religious liberty for Bible colleges. And during a period of time when uh, some folks who told us once upon a time they stood for that and have given in to the pressure not to anymore, there has been a gentleman who's been a state representative and now a state senator that you could always count on. No matter how much pressure there is, no matter what the situation, to be a voice for religious liberty and for the right of Bible colleges to operate under the direction of the Lord and the local church rather than the state. That's Darren Bailey and he's going to be this year's recipient of the Isaac Bacchus Award He'll be in church here next Sunday to receive the award personally. But as part of our college graduation, we wanted to take this moment to, be thank, to thank him, to honor him, 
and to respect him and all those folks that join in the struggle for religious liberty. This just didn't happen accidentally. It has happened because people boldly and bravely have said this is right and will stand for it. All across America, there appears to be an awakening. People saying, wait a minute, how did we get where we are today? And we got, got here by surrendering those principles of separation of church and state. We want to take this moment to thank and to honor Darren Bailey for being a person you could always count on to stand for those principles. Pastor. And uh, Senator Darren Bailey will be here next Sunday morning to uh, actually give the award to, but uh, we thank God for people that stand up for uh, biblical values in our state government. And we are also thankful for uh, men and women that God has used uh, for many, many years in a faithful Christian service. And we're going to have the opportunity to honor such a man today. His name is Pastor John Julian. And Pastor John Julian uh, went to the same Bible college that my mom and dad did. He arrived, I think, shortly after my folks arrived here in the Chicago, the greater Chicago area. And I told you the story of Pastor John Julian's son, Paul, drinking gasoline. And I think most of you didn't believe that. But that was shortly after they arrived and to help us out in Palatine. And we, I remember Dad and, and, and Pastor John going on bike rides. They had the uh, Schwinn 10-speeds. And they were just all over the place riding or, or they were walking and, and knocking on doors. And I just remember those moments as a child. And it was awesome to have a buddy, uh, Paul, to grow up with. But then God called him to pastor a church. It was a little church in a little town called Woodbine, Illinois. And I remember going out there to visit them and, and having fun out in the country. And it was there that Pastor John Julian met a family named the Collisons. And there's a big connection here, isn't there? Because you just heard from Nathan Collison. And uh, he met Randy there and the family. Eventually, Randy came to Dayspring and met Wendy. And uh, it's been wonderful to have the Collisons in our church. But that's all because of the faithfulness of Pastor John Julian. He has served our ministry in many capacities, associate pastor. Uh, he has uh, served the Woodbine Church and another church, Calumet City Bible Church, as senior pastor for many years faithfully. And now in his, I'm not gonna say retirement because you work harder than most uh, folks that I know, but in his later years, he is dedicating himself and his wife they're dedicating themselves to serving the Lord uh, right here at Dayspring Bible College. And it's great to have a man not only lecturing, but also there to answer the questions of the students. He, is, he has a wealth of knowledge. He's a great preacher. And you're going to hear a short sermon from him. He'll be prov pr providing the commencement address to our graduates in, in a few moments. But it's, it is with great honor and uh, excitement, and I know my dad would be very, very happy for this moment uh, because we're going to be presenting to Pastor John Julian a degree, a Doctor of Divinity uh, from the Dayspring Bible College and Seminary on the recommendation of the Board of Trustees in recognition of outstanding achievement for the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ confers the honorary diploma of Doctor of Divinity upon John T. Julian with all the rights, honors, and privileges thereunto appertaining. Would you please come and accept your, your diploma? Take this off. 
I couldn't preach with that on, folks. I'm sorry. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, all right. I, I, I prepared some notes to read, okay? Uh, it'll be a miracle if I can get through this. Uh, this church has been so good <clears throat> uh, to us, and it's not long. So uh, if I could read, though, from Philippians, and uh, because it, it's kind of the, uh, the message of Philippians to us, it's about priorities, and it's, it's very short, honestly. Um, but Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13, the Apostle Paul wrote, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect and be thus minded, and if anything otherwise be minded, God shall reveal even thus unto you. Nevertheless, for until we have all, for to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brothers, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk as ye have us for an example. For many walk who whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned unto, like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Now, I, I say that because uh, I, I use that passage because this is, uh, so let me read this, okay? <laughs> it is with deep appreciation and humility that I receive this honorary doctorate from the Day Spring Bible College in light of the blessing that Quentin Road Baptist Church has been to me and my family for some 48 years. I have had the privilege of witnessing the growth of this church from its first building on Quentin Road in Palatine to the building it occupies today in Lake Zurich, Illinois. I, like many others, caught the vision of Dr. James Scudder Sr. of a biblical, a real New Testament church in the northwest suburbs, suburbs and have been privileged to see the vision become a reality beyond what one could imagine. Pastor Scudder, no one, and this is your Pastor Scudder, no one could match the passion your father had for the lost souls. No man I've ever met was more focused on winning the lost at any cost. No man I know has lived his life so completely for the sake of the gospel and give his life completely, he did, sacrificing his personal comfort and well-being for the pursuit of the lost and to protect the sheep of God entrusted to his care. Many were the lions and bears that Dr. Scudder fought for the sake of his sheep. Some enemies were subtle. Some for, were ferocious, but our dear pastor took on them all to spare his flock. Like our Lord and the Apostle Paul, Dr. Scudder suffered many wounds at the hands of his enemies and even some grievous wounds at the hands of friends. Nothing, however, could deter him from his mission. He fought and he gave his life for the souls of men. Tonight, I take this opportunity to thank Dr. Scudder's family and the people of the church. Who 
who allowed me the honor of ministering among them. All that I know about biblical ministry, I owe to this church. I have been loved, uh, nourished, encouraged, and forgiven by this church these many years. The estimate of what I owe to the Scudder family in this church is beyond human capacity to repay. Day Day Spring Bible College is a living testament to its founder. The men and women being trained in the Day Spring Bible College are and will continue to evidence Dr. Scudder's passion for the lost. For Dr. Scudder's passion for a close, for a clear gospel is their passion. His willingness to sacrifice his life for the gospel can be seen in their lives as well. Dr. Scudder has taught us to make the clear gospel the priority of our life. The gospel was the motivation of his life. All was for the sake of the gospel. Church, family, friends, finances, all was to be done for the sake of the gospel. Because of that priority, I, like many of you, have a wonderful church. We enjoy families that honor God and are a blessing to those around them. Our friends are godly friends that give their lives to God's service daily. Because we were taught to give, we also are blessed financially. The gospel is the purpose for it all. I've been asked recently what were the biggest challenges that I faced when I graduated from Bible college. <laughs> I can't remember yesterday, much less 48 years ago. In fact, I forget what I went into one room to another room to get when I get there. <laughs> Seriously though, I knew the priority of my life was to win souls and I had a friend that had started a church in Chicago and I was willing for God to use me and wanting God to use me for his glory. I was going to Chicago to help my friend build a church. I didn't have a grand scheme. I did have the right priority. I know today that my life would have been much different had I been in do not been in Dr. Scudder's ministry. The things I learned here about serving the Lord, raising a family, and everyday living have filled my life with blessing. What greater blessing, what greater blessing can you have than to see your children embracing your Christianity going beyond anything imaginable? all because your pastor lived out before you a passion for the gospel that you could follow. The blessings go on and on to the next generation. The next thing you know, you have the third generation that will be blessed the same way because they are seeing the passion of the gospel lived out before them. You can look around at other churches especially in this area, I don't think you will find the kind of generational blessing that you see in our church. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. Oh, excuse me. It's just, it's not there, folks. Uh, the most of the things, when you talk about generational things, you're talking about generational sin. You're talking about generational divorce. You're talking about generational child abuse. You're talking about generational sexual abuse. We're talking about generational godliness. A price had to be paid for what we have today. Doctor and his, Scudder and his family have been willing to pay that price. It has been my privilege to watch God honor his word these many years. I can testify that God is faithful. If you will make the gospel the priority of your life, you will look back in 40, maybe 50 years and see that God 
has been faithful to you too. Now let me switch gears a little bit. There was a hymn uh, that we used to sing uh, when I was a child, and it's never left me. Do you notice that about your, your hymns just keep coming back to you? I don't, I don't think we sing this much. I don't think I've sung it much as an adult in a church, but uh, I've never forgotten it. It says this, Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. From him no power of evil can sever. He gave his life to ransom my soul. Why, isn't that powerful? Now I belong to him. I wonder if you can say that tonight. Once I was lost in sin's degradation, Jesus came down to bring me salvation. He lifted me up from sorrow and shame. Now I belong to him. Joy floods my soul, for Jesus has saved me, freed me from sin that long had enslaved me. His precious blood he shed to redeem. Now I belong to Jesus. I always love this chorus. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. You can know for sure you're going to heaven. There's not anyone here that can't be saved. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, let me encourage you to. Maybe you won't realize what we talk about, what I'm talking about when I say the blessing that we've had. But the blessing is because of the, the gospel. Because Jesus loved us so much that he gave his son to die in our place and pay the price of our sin. The wages of sin being death. To pay the sin ourselves, we would be separated from God for all eternity. You can only pay for your own sin. You can't pay for a relative's sin. You can only pay for your sin, your life for your sin. And we're talking about eternal consequences. Jesus came to pay that debt for you. Jesus never sinned. He was God in the flesh. He came and he lived a perfect life so that you could so that he could, he could pay the price of your sin. He never sinned. He didn't have his own sin to pay for. And because he was God, he could pay for all the sin of the world. And he did. He paid for all sin so that you and I can go to heaven. We could never earn heaven. Good works do not pay for sin. The Bible doesn't say if you do this or that or the other, you'll pay for sin. The Bible says the wages of sin or the payment for sin is death. Jesus made that payment for you. If I could use my wallet, I won't use my wallet, I'll use my cell phone here, wherever it is. <laughs> That's what happens when you get old. You can't even see it right in front of you. Well, it's better than the alternative, right? All right. If this hand represents you and me and my telephone, my phone's sin. God loves you and me. He hates our sin. He hates our sin because our sin separates from him. Our sin is like Satan's IED. It doesn't matter which one it is. Satan uses it to destroy us. And God hates sin because it destroys you and me. He loves you and me. That sin separates us from him. If we pay for that sin, it's separation from God for eternity in a place called the lake of fire. God doesn't want anyone to spend eternity separated from him. He wants everyone to go to heaven. So he offers this gift. He sent his son, and I ask you to let this man represent Christ. He sent him to come to earth to take your sin and my sin upon himself 
and to pay for it so that we could have the righteousness that we need to go to heaven. You can't earn it. Works don't pay for sin. Death pays for sin. Jesus Christ came to earth to take your sin upon himself and to pay for it. And he will give you eternal life in heaven as a free gift if you'll just simply believe that Jesus died in your place and paid the price of your sin. Believe in him as your savior. You can't save yourself. You need a savior. There's only one person that was worthy or able to save, and that was the Lord Jesus, because he was God in the flesh, and he had no sin. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he, God, hath made him Christ, who knew no sin, to be made sin for us, that we could be made the righteousness of God in him. It's that simple. Jesus Christ paid it all so that you could know that you have eternal life. It's a free gift. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Would you take this moment, if you don't know for sure you're going to heaven, would you just take this moment to talk to God? Say, God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I can't save myself. The best way I know how, I'm trusting Jesus Christ as my Savior. Will you pray with me? Every head bowed and every eye closed. Right now, in the quietness of your mind, just talking to the living God. That way you can't make a mistake. Just tell him. Maybe this is the first time you realized Jesus Christ paid it all for you. And not just for the time you're alone, but for all eternity. If you've made that decision, I'd like to pray for you. If you just slip your hand up and take it down. Just say, Pastor, I'm trusting Christ as my Savior. Will you pray for me? And I will pray for you. Father, we thank you so much for Jesus Christ, for the salvation we have. We have, thank you for godly men like Dr. Scudder, willing to pay the price so that we could have what we have. And we just thank you so much for these graduates that are going out to serve you, some with great uh, great doubt, great wonder, great, how's it going to work? Lord, we know you're faithful, and I just pray that you would bless them, give them the confidence in you. Help them to always fo focus that you are the one that cared for us so much that you would die in our place. And we ask you, Father, for your blessing on our current pastor, Pastor Scudder. We thank you for him and how he's just following in his dad's footsteps, and we just praise you. We're thrilled to death to see what you're doing through him. And we ask you, Father, for your blessing and your protection on this church and our pastor and his family. We thank you so much for them and all they've done and all they've meant to us for all these many, many years. And we pray in Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you, Dad. Appreciate that. And it's an honor to be able to, to work with him every day. And uh, it's fun to have him, him there and working with the students. We've had an awesome night, so probably we can just close and we don't have to do the next part, do we? No, we do. Uh, they've worked, the students have worked hard, and it's awesome that we get to honor them uh, this evening uh, with their degrees. And so... Dr. James A. Scudder, Jr., the following students have successfully completed all the requirements of study and have maintained a good testimony for the Lord. And upon recommendation of the faculty of Dayspring Bible College and the authority vested upon you, I request that you confer the Certificate of Biblical Studies to, on the following students. Emily Rose 
gather coal. Casey Bennett Vincent. Dr. Jim Scudder Jr., the following students have successfully completed all the requirements of study and have maintained a good testimony before the Lord. And upon the recommendation of the faculty of Dayspring Bible College and the authority that is vested upon you, I request that you confer the Associates of Biblical Studies degree on the following candidates. With the Associates in Biblical Studies, with an emphasis in theology, Claire Tu. With a degree of Associates in Biblical Studies, with the emphasis in theology, Michael Angelo Sampson Caroon. <laughs> with a degree of Associates of Biblical Studies, with emphasis in theology, Pinto Samuel. Dr. Jim Scudder Jr., the following students have successfully completed all the requirements of study and have maintained a good testimony for the Lord. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of Dayspring Bible College and Seminary and the authority that is vested upon you, I request that you confer the Bachelor of Biblical Education degree on the following candidates. Majoring in Bible and Christian Secondary Education, Michaela Kennedy Arnett. Majoring in Bible and Church Music, Sydney Megan Duncan. <laughs> Majoring in Church Christian Secondary Education, Ariana Faith Sortman. Majoring in Bible and Christian Missions, Ian Piolo Ofrecio. <laughs> Majoring in Bible and Pastoral Studies, Jeremiah Jerome Young. And unable to be here tonight with us uh, because his wife is due at any moment, and that is uh, Joshua Craig Horning, majoring in Bible and Pastoral Studies. <laughs> Dr. Jim Scudder Jr., the following student, has successfully completed all the requirements of study has satisfactorily uh, completed a master's thesis, maintained a good testimony for the Lord, and upon the recommendation of the faculty of Dayspring Bible College and Seminary and the authority that is vested upon you, I request you to confer the master's of biblical ministry degree on the following candidate. William Merrill Blakely, Jr. As a graduate of Dayspring Bible College, it's not just a formality, but it is a sacred pledge that we ask our students to make to the Lord and to you as witnesses this evening. And so they will read a pledge along with me and uh, will receive uh, tonight that they can wear proudly a class uh, pin 
to remind them of uh, the pledge that they've made here tonight. As a member of the graduating class of 2022, in the presence of God and these assembled witnesses, I acknowledge the debt I owe to Dayspring Bible College and Seminary for helping me to reach my personal goal and achieve academic excellence. I pledge to seek earnestly and faithfully to perpetuate this opportunity for this generation of young people that our Lord's work may never lack for leaders of character and ability. In accordance with scriptural truth, I pledge my life and loyalty to my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, my commitment to continue learning that I may grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, to continue the pursuit of excellence in all things as I seek to advocate the kingdom of Christ. And so as the graduates turn to face the audience, we have one last final thing to do, and that is the turning of the tassel. And so you can turn the tassel, signifying that you have gone from graduate candidate to a graduate. And so it is with great honor on behalf of Dayspring Bible College and Seminary to present to you for the first time the graduating class of 2022. You can be seated. <laughs> I'm representing the Board of Deacons for the for, uh, Point Road Bible, Bible, uh, Baptist Church. And um, <clears throat> we're glad to be a part of the um, ordination of uh, Nathan Collison tonight. And I'd like to read to you the official board re uh, record of this following resolution. For the official record, the following resolution was adopted by the Board of Deacons of the Quentin Road Baptist Church this 24th day of April, 2022. Whereas the Board of Deacons of the Quentin Road Baptist Church has examined the qualifications of Nathan Collison for the office of pastor, including his personal public testimony, his faithfulness to the gospel of Jesus Christ and his willingness and desire to serve in the manner to which he has been called by God. Be it therefore resolved that the Board of Deacons does hereby declare that Nathan Collison has successfully fulfilled all the biblical requirements and qualifications for the office of pastor. And the Board does therefore unanimously unanimously adore, endorse his official ordination as minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. Dr. Howe, please come to the stage. I will also ask uh, Flo if you would also come and uh, stand by your husband as we first ask a few questions. Uh, and then we will pray a prayer of ordination and then present you a couple items. I would also like to ask if we can have our deacons, please, uh, board of deacons, please come to the stage and stand behind, as well as ordained pastors on our church staff. Uh, would you please come as well and stand behind? So uh, Nathan, would you step forward just a little bit so people can get behind you? And I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Uh, Nathan also has been through an ordination council, and he passed uh, with flying colors, and this is a formality. Do you believe the scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be the word of God without error in the original writings, the only rule of our faith and practice? I do. Do you acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ as the only redeemer and head of his church, and are you willing to submit to his lordship? Have you been motivated, as far as you know your own heart, to seek the office of pastor from love of God, obedience to God's call, and to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ? Do you promise to be zealous and faithful in maintaining the truths of the gospel and the purity and peace of the church 
whatever persecution or opposition may arise unto you on that account? I do. Do you promise to be faithful and diligent in your personal and family life, as well as in the public duties of your office, endeavoring to walk as an example before the people of God? Are you ready now to take the responsibilities of pastor? So therefore, we will lay hands. I would ask for you to kneel on the stage. We're going to have uh, our pastors and deacons to come behind. One knee or two. It doesn't matter. Oh. <laughs> Whatever you can do. I've never done it before. <laughs> <laughs> and I am, uh, I'm going to ask Pastor John Julian, shall I say Dr. John Julian, to offer a prayer of dedication, and I then will... Um, follow up with a prayer. And then Flo, let's have you stand, uh, step up a little bit so you'll be in the picture here. Pastor Julian. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much for men that are willing to give their lives in service to you. And we ask your blessing on Nathan and on his family as they go and they're already preparing, starting a church and then in the field and working to win souls where they're at. They have a burden. And we pray, Father, that you would bless them. We ask you, Father, that you would give him that confidence that what we saw in him as representing you and the gospel, that you have confirmed that and that he would have the confidence that you are going to take care of every need, that you're going to overcome every obstacle, that you're going to bless him. And we thank you, Father. And we pray that you would put a hedge about him and his family, and that you would give him much, much fruit for his labors in the Honduras. We thank you for the souls that have been saved already. We ask you to continue to bless them, and we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Father, we are committing to you this wonderful family. Lord, we thank you so much for the Collisons. Lord, we're especially thankful for Nathan, that you have protected him brought him this far, gave him a burden and passion to be a missionary, and now a pastor. Lord, we ask a tremendous uh, protection that would be placed upon him and Flo and the boys and the, um, the family, Lord. We just thank you for their, their beautiful daughter. We thank you for um, their work, the, uh, the ongoing, Lord, ministry. We thank you for all of these things, and we ask for great success that souls would be saved. So, Father, we commit Nathan to you as he is now being ordained as a pastor of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he would be faithful in his duties until you return. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Congratulations. I'm going to give you an ordination certificate. We're going to give Nathan two things. One is a certificate of ordination, and this is to all churches and Christians everywhere. Greetings. This will certify that our dearly beloved brother, Nathan David Collison, was set apart to the ministry of the gospel of Christ at the Quentin Road Baptist Church at Lake Zurich, Illinois, this 24th day of April, 2022, and is hereby commended everywhere as a minister of Christ, signed by our pastors and deacons. Congratulations. And we also would like to give you a Bible. And this is a Bible that will give you, um, first of all, large print, which should help you as you get older. Uh, but more importantly, we've been able to uh, write notes of, notes of encouragement in the Bible to you. And we want you to take this and uh, keep it close to you. As you remember, sometimes Dad would hold the Bible to his chest, and he just loved the Word of God, and may you love the Word of God. God bless you. Okay, we're going to have a closing word of prayer. I feel unusual with all these kids, though. <laughs> I've been a pastor for many years trying to continue my education, and thank you, Dr. Scudder, for what you're allowing us to have here. So let's have a closing word of prayer, okay? Lord, we thank you for this night. 
Thank you for the school, Lord. Thank you for the pastor and, Lord, all that's being done. Help us to go out from here to take the gospel, to preach the gospel, to share the word of God with so many lost people out there, Lord. Continue to bless this school and this church. And, Lord, all that's done, Lord, better be for all your glory, for your, all your honor, Lord. Thank you and praise you tonight, God, for who you are and what you do and for your son, Jesus. In his precious name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Would you all stand as we close with one final song singing of who that Savior is to us. He's with us to the end. Sing this with me as we close. Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Jesus, lover of my soul. Wonderful evening. Thank you all for coming and congratulations, graduates.